computer. All right. Uh, my guest is Steve Melvin. Steve's based in Hi. London. London? Just outside. Just outside, yeah. London's a big place. Um, the reason I've got Steve is Steve has done a lot of work around niching. He's on our six program. He's regularly, you know, he's a regular attender at everything. And we've had a few chats. We've had a we've had a one-on-one actually. We had a great one-on-one session uh, a couple of months ago. And some of the stuff that Steve has applied and developed has been really interesting, and I think would be very interesting, particularly for architects who struggle to kind of find a niche, and, and particularly around the way he's, you know, the way he's thinking about things now. So, why don't you give us a, a quick overview on who are you, what do you do, who, who you do it for? I run my own business. Uh, there are six of us at the moment. Uh, it's just outside London. Uh, I've been running it for about 15 years, um, and it is urban rural fringe context. Um, and I was absolutely inspired to, to join the six program. I've already had uh, some successes, but, but definitely felt um, lacking in um, uh, application really, um, just feeling that I wasn't reaching my potential, um, wasn't uh, winning the kind of clients I want, at least not all the time, and even dealing with an awful lot of frustration um, and uh, well, boredom as well. Really. Right. Yeah. It, seem, it seems to me, you know, that architects, the number one thing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this, this is what I've picked up. It's about winning, you know, good quality projects where there's a good scope for you to do great design. I mean, this might be obvious to, to architects and architects are listening, but you know, architects want to do great design for people who value great design and have a budget for it. <laughs> That's, that seems to me to be the kind of the driving force. Money, yep. Yep, architects want to earn money, but that's more a consequence of working on great design. And if it was one or the other, you know, if it was okay money, but great great design projects, my sense is a lot of them would go, yeah, give me the great design projects because, you know, I'll benefit later on from having a great portfolio and stuff like that. But yeah. is that a fair assessment? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's the way architectural training works. Um, you know, architecture school, but it's about integrity of design first rather than right. making money. Right, yeah. right. And so, okay, so, and I sense from where you were that winning great design projects, I, I guess, of all the projects that come along, what percentage of the opportunities that, that, that come to you or came to you would you put in that category of, yeah, that's exactly the type of projects I'd like to be doing? Okay, so over uh, over 15 years, I probably won three projects which were in that category right. out of um, 30 plus. Yes, so right. 10%. But, you know, yeah. Well, that's 10% of the projects you actually chose to do. Yeah. And there's yeah. probably another set of projects that you chose not to do as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, okay. So, so obviously the you know the dream life, the dream life I guess for a for an architect who who wants to do great design is I only do these type of projects you know like the ten that we've got. It's all right. So give us a give us a rundown on um, you know the two big things that you mentioned to me that that you've applied in the last um, six or. 12 months or how long have you been? It's, yeah, it's six months since I joined six. Okay. Yeah, it's six months. Yeah. So, so, so tell uh, us, yeah, what, what did you do first and, and why did you do it? Mm. Uh, well, well, attending the, the, the cool program, um, I really focused in on mindset. I mean, right. the program also pushes you to get those offers out. And, and yeah, obviously that's important to complete the course and move on. But for me, the... Um, the exercises in, in mindset focus um, right. were crucial, were key. And so um, that was uh, a turning point for me. And what was a turning point about it, I think, was it gave me, it just released what was already there. It released right. latent power, but it brought it into focus and then gave me confidence that actually that power was real and relevant. 
So can you be specific? Where, what was your mindset before that was, that was stopping you? And then what, where did it move to? And, and what specifically did you do to, to make that transition? I think, I think um, I was a bit disconnected in, in my interests in life. I, um, and, and through developing mindset, it enabled me to integrate interests and therefore apply that, that life force, if you like, that power into architecture as a channel. Um, so, and, and, and for me, this other profound interest of mine is, is climbing mountaineering and, and you know, delving into wild landscape. And I had yet to find a way to make sense of that in, in the architecture field. And it's, it's in its infancy now, but I feel that there is a seed that is germinating that is exactly that, that I can apply this self-awareness of, of exposure to the landscape and climbing and extreme uh, landscape experience uh, into the architecture process. Right, so, so this is getting pretty deep. So just, just to unpack it, uh, you had your architecture practice and, and your design that you were doing. You also had, yeah. and, you, and I'm sure, and that's a passion, you know, when it's done, yeah. right? And then you had your passion of, of mountaineering, nature, the environment, yeah. you know, getting out and climbing rocks. Um, nice. but, but, but what I'm hearing is you, they were disconnected. They were two very separate worlds. And what yeah. you were able to do was find, you were able to integrate them in some way that took your design and mindset around design to another level by integrating your passion for, so, so what'd you do, you know, how did you take something which two separate things, both of which you like, but by putting them together, you took, you took at least the architecture side up. How yeah, you... I mean, I did a lot of brainstorming, a lot of um, writing uh, of thoughts, uh, of linking, you know, emotions that might drive me in a de design and emotions I might feel in, in a, on a mountain. Um, and I started to draw parallels and um, uh, found it really exciting. And then also looked at images, images of my work and also images of, of mountain and climbing experiences I've had and, and sort of picked out underlying emotions and themes. Um, and it was really revealing. So what um, were, just to be specific, what were the underlying emotions that you, you took from here and put under here? Well, there's obviously in climbing, you've got a range of emotions, but, to, you know, exhilaration is, is a big one. Right. Um, uh, fear um, um, and obviously the stress that comes with that. Um, but you've also got a sense of peace and freedom, um, uh, you know, once you've achieved something where you were really stretched to your limit. Um, so, and, and, and the journey of that, of, of, of going through those emotions um, is, 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 you know, was, was one of the things I think that I found this parallel in. Um, also allied to this, uh, to, to the, if you like, my architecture training and when I was younger, what's interesting is I actually started studying landscape architecture at university. And it was because then I, I knew I was interested in landscape. I'd just been traveling in uh, South Africa and, um, uh, for, for a year and I'd just seen the most amazing landscapes, and took loads of photographs and, ske and sketched and so on. So when I came back, I signed up to, to study landscape architecture. And I think the only thing that made me change, because I was in a school of architecture where they ran the two courses alongside each other for the first year and we were sharing modules and so on. The only thing that made me change to do architecture was I felt that the training in architecture was more comprehensive in terms of form and space mm. and program. And so I thought, well, look, I want that more comprehensive training. And then when I've done that, we'll see how I apply it. And so actually now I'm in, OK, I'm an architect, but I'd love to see myself as, as and perhaps landscape architects won't want to hear me say that, but as a as a landscape architect, as, as an architect who is working with landscape. Right. Yeah. Right. And so 
the integration from the two, you know, and, and that's that's the thing about your work that I can see anyway, and maybe you can describe it better than me, but is it that is it that integrating um, those emotions from rock climbing into architecture, or is it is that been the benefit, or has it been the benefit that by using the uh, rock climbing analogies, you're able to communicate what you do to yourself and to others better? It's, it's definitely the second. Right. Um, it's definitely the second because th those experiences uh, in the mountain are, 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 are very important to me and I want to share them. And when you're climbing, you might be able to share them with your partner, um, the person you're climbing with, um, but you don't really get to share them with many other people unless, of course, you, you, go, you do slide lecture tours and so on. Uh, and I've done a little bit of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really in that in that realm of having the opportunity to do that. So, you know, it, it just would make my life so much more meaningful if I can bring those profound mm. uh, landscape uh, experiences um, to, to, to benefit other people, mm. um, you know, in construction of space and um, uh, creating space that has atmosphere that can, that can draw out those emotions, yeah. So how do you, how do you communicate what you do now? You know, how, how do you use that? Because that was the issue. Well, That's the issue that I see a lot of architects have is I can't, you know, I have kind of my own favorite genres and things like that, but I can't really explain, you know, say, what are you? Oh, I'm an architect. Okay. What sort of, what sort of work do you do? Oh, residential or commercial. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and you've got to yeah. go deeper than that, you know, so yeah. how do you go deeper to explain how you're unique, what you offer that other people don't offer. And yeah, good question. I think you, well, it's, as I said, this process is in its infancy for me and I just feel it's getting exciting and there's a seed germinating, but you put little drops in. So for example, I've created um, some um, images of recent projects, uh, which, you know, the, the, the more important projects um, that I've had and, and striking images and then with a quote on them. And that quote will have, will be philosophical and mm -hmm. will be about my landscape passion uh, and so on and trying to make it uh, accessible to other people and those postcards are going to have the dream team uh, on the back and I'll give them to all my uh, consultants who are working on that particular project uh, you know 10 for each consultant so that they then pass those out. Then, of course, my newsletter, I'm trying to drop stuff of this into as well. My website offers has a one or two seductive images of mountains uh, and landscapes. Um, so just little by little, just dropping things in. And I'm noticing people now who are, who are ringing up about, um, you know, uh, RC Expert or even going into needs and options that they're, they're starting to pick up and question me on this uh, landscape process. And this, well, I call it my pioneer nature method. Um, you know, they're intrigued by it, and um, it seems to be drawing in some bait, or drawing in some prey. Right. So you've got you've got your own pioneer nature method, and who would you yeah. say you're for? What's the unique value that you bring to a client? Well, the pioneer nature method is all about reconnection with nature right. uh, and the theory that really well, obviously we're all from nature so we're all connected to nature anyway but I, pe many people argue that in our society we're disconnected and perhaps that process even started way back you know before the industrial revolution whenever um but it, so it's it, it, it's it, this pioneer nature method is is uh, is to 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 reconnect. Right. Um, so I think that it, it, very simply that's what I want to offer. Yeah. Okay. So it's helping people reconnect with 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 nature. Nature. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And so how would you define your niche now? <laughs> well, the obvious one is, is modern rural architecture. And that might be uh, residential, so rural retreats. 
or it might be rural leisure, like um, equestrian centres, golf clubs, um, spas, mountain refuges. Um, I suppose you, you can put wine farms in there as well. I mean, there's, there's numerous, if you like, modern building types that have the opportunity to adorn landscape, to mm. actually contribute to stunning landscape, to create exceptional design within you know, a beautiful landscape. And that's, I think it's, it's an opportunity uh, to, to do that. Um, we, we all know the environment is so precious and we've all got to do so much now in, in the future generations to, uh, whether you call it save or um, regenerate, um, you know, the environment. So f for me, being able to create beautiful buildings in, in exceptional landscapes is important where the building uh, is really contributing. It's yeah. not separate from the landscape. It's, right. It's integrating. You're integrating yeah. the, the building yeah. and the land together. You're reconnecting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not re yeah. You're, you're, you're making sure they're connected. They're not just, they're not two separate entities. They're one entity. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 but, you know, it's great because, so this clarity that you now have about about you know what what you do and who you're for is is that is that kind of the, the key thing is that you know because we talked about mindset and niche and, and it's almost like those two things kind of overlap because I get a sense that by defining your niche at least to yourself to start with that gives you a whole lot more clarity at least within yourself as to who you are and what you're for. And that allows you now to go out and, 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 and actually, you know, pick the right projects and actually know what to say to who in a way that that is now more compelling and clear for them. You know, you gotta be clear in your own head first before you can be clear to someone else. But I get the sense that now you've kind of defined in your own mind exactly what you are then it makes it easier to then go and, and, and do your marketing and stuff. Yes, and I noticed in the course that, that very cleverly you have niche there um, very early on. And it, because it's, a, it's both simple and profound as a concept, you know, you can get your head around the idea of niche pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like opening a lid and there's this stuff down there, you know, which might have been... You, you might have started it when you were at uni or even before uni with these dreamy ideas and so on. And, um, and somewhere along the way, it's kind of gotten shelved and compromised and, um, mm. you know, forgotten mm. a bit. And so by... You forget, you forgot. You, you know, you probably had an essence because it seems most architects go into architecture for a reason and they're kind of quite clear when they go in. But then they get bumped around so much that you can often disconnect and forget what you went in for. And, okay. and, and you said right at the start, um, you know, what the process has done has actually reminded you or reconnected you back to what was already inside you. You know, it's almost yeah. like you've been able to reconnect yeah. with something which has always been there, but you've forgotten it or you haven't, clearly seen it or but now you reconnected back with what was already there yeah and that that exactly. i think is a very powerful thing because now when you're going out into the world you're reconnected to something very strong um you're reconnected probably to the reason that you were told by something to go into architecture in the first place exactly you're going back to the roots of it all a, a kind of a life force you know so yeah you, um yeah I mean, it's unstoppable and it's so relevant when you reach that point, that, mm. that connection. You know? And you must come from such a sense of strength now. Yeah, because you're doing the same thing. I mean, you've reconnected with the, you know, with your core being as to why, you know, you, this is clearly why you were supposed to be an architect because this is the type of thing you're meant to be doing and you'll probably do it very well and you'll probably be successful because it's the whole reason you were meant to be an architect. It seems to me you're doing the same thing with your clients. You know, if there's if there's a structure that needs to be there, it needs to be connected to the land at the same time. It can't be disconnected or disjointed. And I guess there's another parallel there. 
Yes, I think there's the um, there's the so I've got the direction and I've got the enthusiasm and the energy and the confidence that this is relevant. I think I've got a whole load of work to do to refine the architecture, but then that's what all architects will say, you know, it's a never ending process yes. of refinement. And there are some very great architects in the world who are already engaging with this, this architecture landscape interface. So, but I think what, what I can bring is, is, is my profound experiences and love of nature through climbing um, mm. to, to bring a bit of unique insight into that process. And um, uh, I'm absolutely sure it's the right path for me. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, it sounds like it. And because you're connected to nature, you know, with your passions, it, make, it probably gives you an edge on knowing how to connect a structure to it, you know, because you, you almost have a spiritual collect, connection to nature. And that there's something like, intuitive about it, definitely. There's something intuitive about it. You know, you feel the nature in a place. You feel the atmosphere in a place. And um, uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. So what, what final thought for anyone listening to this who, who are thinking maybe I've kind of maybe disconnected from my, the reason I came in, um, or I'm not clear about, you know, my niche or I get confused about things. What, what advice would you give someone who wants to connect with their, 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 their sole reason for being? Okay. Um, talk to Petri. Yeah. Petri. <laughs> um, no, be patient. And, um, but, but two things, be patient, but also try to stir the, um, the passion. Try to do the, the things that trigger the passion. There must have been times in your process when you felt passionate and were drawn, you know, to do what you do out of passion. Um, and it's it's trying to to find the source of that really. Um, right. Yeah. right. So connect with your passion and design with passion. Yeah. So yeah. refine your refine your passion. Connect with it and, and trust it. Yes. Yes. Because it is you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, very deep. Very deep. I love <laughs> very deep, meaningful. And I, I'm, I'm sure some people listening to this will get a huge amount out, out of it um, because uh, it is a, it is a deep thing, and, and, and architecture is a passion profession. Uh, but people aren't always uh, connected to that passion. So hopefully, we can re reconnect a few more people and uh, and make the world a better place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but so, so many thanks to you. I mean, it's just been awesome to be on this yeah. journey. No, love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Steve, you're the marketer of the month. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> Thank okay. We asked to, to do a project in New Zealand or China or um, uh, North America or Africa or anything. And I don't mean going to a big city and doing a big status, but I'm talking about still these landscape uh, installation type projects. Mm. I mean, to do, you need an international profile for that. So right. that's, that's what I'm aiming for. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Sounds good.